All right. I'm calling it the Sci-Fi Express because um, I get the Sci-Fi Express lane. I got to get used to saying that whole thing. So welcome to the Sci-Fi Express lane. We're going to try this new name out and roll with it. Um, I did a little poll on, on, on Instagram and, and Facebook and through texting. And this is uh, one of the names that I came up with by after listening to people. So today's topic on the Sci-Fi Express lane, um, I am going to express, right, my thoughts on, um, more so on like utopian writing and, and the need for a certain level of conflict in, in stories and um, I guess why what I think about that um, I don't necessarily write dystopian um, stories but dystopian stories have become so popular that people have felt that you need to have a corrupt world an oppressive world to have a um, good story and Really, that's what a dystopian story is. It's um, the world is corrupt, right? And um, oppressive. And then you have your heroes rise up out of that muck and mire, right? So children's stories have really ran away with that. Young adult, you know, they have the Hunger Games, which, which kind of started with The Giver, right? where they were killing babies. I just watched that on TV a little bit ago. And they were killing babies. Then you had the Hunger Games, which was oppressing different parts of the world, um, the society, 13 different tribes. I'm reading this book my son's got me interested in, um, the Red Rising, which is planetary oppression. I'm watching The Expanse and... The Expanse can't is 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 a dystopian look at the future where humans haven't even gotten past um, their divisions and their immaturities, right? And they still fighting over land and space and sharing the wealth, right? Um, you have the Maze Runner, you have Divergent. Uh, those are young adult stories, um, and. You know, these type of things, people can even look at um, Star Wars as sort of dystopian, right? And I think maybe Star Wars might be dystopian light. Um, and, you know, The Expanse would argue that it's not dystopian, that it's just a regular story built on how we are. But, you know, where we are is not actually a good place, you know? the world wasn't always this oppressive to its humans, to its residents, right? To its human residents. I mean, we can look through uh, European history and, and find, you know, a steady growth to where we are now because that is probably the last civilization to get um, civilized, right? Um, we look at Native Americans, they hide their history, but when Columbus got here, they had a full functioning civilization that wasn't dystopian. Now, the way they might wanna portray it in, in movies like Apocalypto, which is South American, where they were sacrificing people, one, that's also a, a negative look at it, right? And that culture, was not the only culture in South America or even Central America when you're dealing with the Mayans, right? The Incans were further south. The Mayans were more Central America. They had different cultures, and we don't know anything about those. You, we can say whatever we want. We don't learn about that in America. We don't learn anything about the mound builders and the, the pyramid of, of America, of the Americas, you know, so we don't know them, right? Um, same thing with, with Africa, right? We, we say, oh, Africa's the biggest continent, but Africa got recorded history over 10,000 years. They 
Imhotep was doing open heart surgery 5000 BC, you know, um, they had a culture that was high. Then throughout the West and the Eastern part of Africa, you had different cultures. Those, So the pre-colonial Africa and the pre-colonial sub-Saharan African history is what you don't really hear much about. What you hear about is the colonialized and post-colonialized Africa, which is after 3, 1300 um, 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 AD, right? The last 700 years, you'll hear, oh, Africans don't know how to get along. Oh, this and this and that, and it's horrible, you know? But the pre-colonial Africa, how they dealt with themselves before, doesn't show the same evidence in the behaviors as the post-colonial Africa. Um, so when you talk about dystopian worlds and, and utopian worlds, maybe because we're living in dystopian worlds and dystopian world writers or dystopian writers, um, of, of history, right? Because people can look at something negative. Uh, Elijah Muhammad presented the clean glass, dirty glass. So that's an optimistic and a pessimistic view. So you can be, a, you can see one world as sort of dystopian or the history, or you can say just people are just doomed to dystopian structures, or you can say, you know, they can rise above it and create harmonious environments. So I say the bulk of human civilized history is utopianish. It's not dystopian. So, um, when we talk about stories, right? Getting back to stories, this is this is an element of sci-fi, right? We call alternative history, um, historical. Um, I forgot. I know this alternative history is another history subcategory of science fiction, right? Um, but then we've got futuristic speculation and these stories that are not historical, but they um, stem, they branch off from a certain historical perspective, right? Where the world is going. Okay, this is Lord of the Flies. When we realize, damn, Lord of the Flies was even a fake story. And the real Lord of the Flies, they learn to civilize and hunt and, and gather food and they didn't become cannibals and degraded into barbarians. So even the damn Lord of the Flies story is reversed in real life. Um, so again, uh, we, we hit with these false narratives of our human behavior that we accept as projections of our futuristic human behavior. It's horrible. So here's how I can say very simple. We can have a utopian world with a good action story. Now, um, take Star Trek. Star Trek is, for all intents and purposes, a utopian Earth. Um, now, if you move past the misogyny of Captain Kirk um, and the racial divide, the Federation, for all intents and purposes, based on what the Gene Roddenberry was able to envision, and I'm just using Western writers at the time because a lot of black writers do have utopian-ish um, um, stories. I know I do, so I'll, I'll speak for me. But going back to Gene Roddenberry and Star Trek, yeah, Star Trek is that story. Star Trek does have a utopian Earth, right? A utopian humanistic experience. Um, however, it's evolved. It got to that point, star date, whatever the date is, that's how long it took them to get to becoming a unified Earth. Now, the universe may not be utopian, and it encounters different forms of oppression throughout the travels of the Starship Enterprise. You have Klingons, you have Romulans, you have even Vulcans have experienced some form of a questionable structure in their culture, you know, especially the, the Spock story. They became they became elitist in this reboot of 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 of, of um, Star Trek. But even if you look outside of Earth, you'll see the Earth messengers of the the Starfleet ships, whether it's 
Picard, shoot, even Deep Space Nine projecting this ability to come together. Um, they're utopian in a mixed world. Some of these aliens do have themselves matured to the point where they've gotten past the immaturities that produce a dystopian world. Because let's not get it twisted. Living dystopian is a, a immaturity of any species development. Not figuring out how to get together harmoniously is a level of immature development. So um, if you look at, you know, there's a, there's a presentation that I put on my um, Facebook page about uh, Rwanda. And Rwanda is an amazing story. Um, even if there's still elements of it that is a problem and they still haven't worked it out, they've done a damn 360 turnaround or 180 or whatever it is to go from being in a civil war with tribal conflicts. You know, I grew up in the, in the 80s and 90s and the Hotel Rwanda was the story that we saw in the news. The Hootsies and the Tootsies were going at each other. Well, they got to the bottom of it and found out, you know, it came out that it was foreign in meddling you know, not necessarily Russian hackers, but at the time it was Belgians, you know, playing the Hootsies and the Tootsies against each other. So they got over that, and now Rwanda is one of the more advanced, futuristic, most human cities on the planet, where their goal is to educate everybody, provide everybody with health care, raise everybody out of poverty, and move towards that, and they're doing it. They are creating a utopian world. Not only they got a holiday where they clean the streets and the neighborhoods together. Yes, of course you say don't litter, but even cars and, and non-deliberate littering creates trash. So even if you try not to litter, there's things that just blow out cars and all types of, you know, it is what it is, but they have a time period where they, you know, I think it's monthly, might even be every week, but they take care of their city. That's amazing. Or their country, you know, and it's not a small country. It's got 12 million people, you know, and it's quite sizable land. So that is a turnaround. Can that be interesting? Yes. Star Trek gives us an example. Somebody comes in, they present conflict. You understand? They threaten the utopia. The world don't have to be utopian, or even utopians' um, worlds are developed. They don't just naturally arise. You have to mature, and that maturity process, that mature maturation, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that process is an interesting story. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't have to start... Um, smart you can become smart you can raise up children you know learn to be mature and, and raise up so that's all you do with dystopian or with your story so you have some external conflict you have some vulcans i mean not vulcans you have some klingons you know who are at a different stage and they present an obstacle for your utopian world so let's not talk and present that um you need some damn dystopian story or uh, oppressive government to be that. Anyway, I've expressed myself um, through sci-fi and I stayed in my lane. I'm a writer, African-American, that's my lane. So I express myself in the lane. Please like and subscribe um, if you think I said something that you would made you think because that's really what i'm doing this for and it does look like my shirt needs to be ironed but all right i'm out peace